We've got Miguel Rodriguez here showing us an absolutely pinpoint beautiful fading length. And yes, the ball is super tight, super glued to that sidewall, which always helps the, the situation. But what he does is where he places the ball, he, he forces Greg, he forces his opponent to make a decision. Does Greg let that ball go to the back wall and try play it off the back? And if you notice where it's going to go, definitely not. If, if Greg was to let that go any further, that ball is dipping into the glass, maybe catching the back wall nick area. So Greg has to make that decision. And now that Miguel's placed it really accurately, there's not much Greg can do in this position. Again, I get very, very interested in where that ball lands. And you'll notice a lot of the times when people are trying to play that attacking and fading length, it tends to land in the service box. Okay, this one's landed towards the front of the service box, which is really super accurate. Not much margin for error. I would suggest players land the ball towards the back of the service box, but inside the service box. Too often I see amateurs hit this length and they just hit it right to the back of the court. And it actually lands about a foot behind the back wall and reaches the back wall and balloons up off the back wall. I'm all for hitting that safety length. I'm all for getting that ball really deep into the corners. But can you start to get the idea where you hit that ball a little bit shorter, a little bit more fading, so you're forcing your opponent to make, make this decision? You'll also notice where Miguel hits that front wall. There we go. Just below that service line. Doesn't give it a full-blooded shot. You can see how he's shaping up. He's not really hitting that ball too hard. He's put a tiny hold in there as well, which probably helps the situation. Just gets Greg to just check a little bit, go forward, and then have to go back. But it, then it's the accuracy, the placement, to be able to make that ball fade and die. And again, a couple of things I look to talk about quite a lot is where he lands that ball. You know, it's an inch away from that side wall. You know, he gives himself a little bit of a margin for error on that front wall, you know, a couple of inches away from the side wall. What I'm trying to say is the more away from the side wall you are, the more you have to take that ball away from the side wall. So by the time it bounces, it, it removes hitting the side wall before the floorboards. So often I see people get in a good position. They've got the good body shape. They're creating everything. And they just hit that ball a little bit too wide on the front wall. So it goes front wall, side wall, then floor, rather than front wall, like this video shows, floor, and then starting to hit that side wall with that fading dying length. And as you notice, we just track that ball a little bit. Yeah, that ball is definitely dying. You know, might just reach the glass, as I said, but he's forcing Gultier to make this decision, ultimately wins that point. A little bit more attention to detail on that fading length.